Hey guys, JV here sharing my thoughts on the new alpha gameplay preview that just came out for Middle Earth Shadow of War, which is the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. The footage shows off the improved nemesis system, an entire siege battle, and more RPG mechanics that weren't in the original game. So if you haven't seen it for yourself, check it out using the link in the description below. There's honestly so much in the 16 minute preview, but I want to focus on a few points that really impressed me. First is the dynamic nemesis system, which just improves on the system from the original game. It's just better from what we can tell in this gameplay. And if you didn't play the first game, this is how the nemesis system works. So the game was all about hunting down leaders to weaken Sauron's armies. And these enemies and allies were procedurally generated with different, you know, voice lines, different personalities, different strengths and weaknesses. And these are things that you had to pay attention to. Enemies were tough if you didn't exploit their weaknesses. So you really had to go after that. So so if you die while trying to defeat one of these procedurally generated enemies, they will actually get stronger. So that fight will be harder than it was before. And they will remember you. They will remember what you did to try to defeat them. And they will, you know, act accordingly. And enemies that survive certain attacks, for example, if you hurt an enemy just a little bit in a certain way, they will want revenge because they remember that you hurt them in that way. So you could also recruit enemy orcs to your side and they would fight for you. And if they succeed in their fights, they get stronger as well. So they they had a progression just like the enemies had and then you could also brand enemies to be kind of like a spy and betray their allies so you could basically trigger fights among your enemies armies in shadow of war this same system is coming back but it's improved of course it's kind of taken a step further so you're gonna have the same procedurally generated enemies or allies they're gonna carry personality traits and abilities and they will remember you they'll come back for revenge just like the original game but there's more going on They've kind of applied this procedural generation to everything. So you've got regions in this game, of which there are several, by the way. It looks like there's a lot going on. It's, this game seems way bigger, which is kind of a complaint of the original game. People are like, it's too short. I loved it, but it was too short. doesn't look like that'll be a problem from what we've seen so far. But each region has unique enemies and allies. And this includes the fortresses and strongholds and missions that you're going to be doing. I also noticed that the strongholds have unique properties, which means you might need to plan accordingly. Like like a game of chess you're gonna have to recruit specific allies in order to conquer these I saw like a mystic fortress and a feral stronghold and a terror fortress for example these are different kind of things that probably cue you like hey you need to bring this specific ability or this specific ally in order to conquer whatever is going to be there I see this as an extension of the fantastic system that was in the original game it looks like they took that procedural generation and unique experience no two players had the same experience I think they repeated that like three times in this gameplay and applied that across the board and that's really cool what really shows off the nemesis system is the siege battle which is completely new I know that in Shadow of Mordor you kind of just ran around an open world hunting important enemies recruiting them and then having some significant fights but now you're attacking these fortresses and strongholds it's called Shadow of War for a reason you are participating in an active war and apparently everything that happened in the gameplay was dynamic and no two players once again will have the same experience so this is a general breakdown of what happened in this gameplay so we have the siege it was broken into three parts you had to breach the main gate then storm the fortress then take down the overlord and along the way you would fight the overlord's war chiefs so in the beginning in order to break down the gate apparently the player brought a demolisher and that was kind of our own war chief we needed this uh, you know unit to actually get through that main gate so I don't know if we didn't bring it could we not get through the main gate? Would that have been a problem? I don't really know. And on that first gate, we had our first war chief enemy that we had to fight, which actually is a former ally, a necromancer who had come back for revenge. Apparently, we left him to die, so he has a personal vendetta against the player. And I think something similar could happen in Mordor, but they're kind of, you know, bringing that into Shadow of War as well. So after we eventually kill him, we break down the gate with our demolisher, and then we actually sneak inside and find that we have a spy. So apparently, you can plant spies among your enemy's ranks and this one is a sniper so remember we killed that war chief well actually that guy came back you know surprise we didn't actually kill him he cheated death I don't know what that means specifically but he came back to kill us and right before he was about to kill us our spy sniper saved our lives so if the system is truly dynamic it makes me think it makes me wonder oh if we didn't get the spy in there if we didn't have the sniper would we have died to the war chief who uh, cheated death you know that's kind of crazy he really did save the life of the player in that situation so it's just 
crazy to think about those possibilities. We also saw that the spy put explosives inside one of the walls to breach for our forces to actually come around and flank the enemy. So again, maybe we would have failed at a certain point if we didn't have that. I'm interested to see how we got that spy in there. I'm sure that was something that happened before the battle, but I'm interested to see what the preparation is before these siege battles and how we're going to be able to tackle these different scenarios. So next up, we face the next war chief who is all about fire. And basically, as we're trying to breach this this next area he puts gasoline all over our demolisher and burns him with a giant siege weapon that is controlling a drake but luckily we brought another ally who has armored mounts and we use his mount to hop over the sidewall and destroy the machine which unleashes the drake which is literally like a dragon a drake you know same thing right and then we hop onto the drake and ride that around <laughs> weakening the defenses of this you know siege stronghold this part was absolutely crazy. I did not see that coming whatsoever, and apparently our actions led to the war chief being terrified. Maybe he had some kind of, uh, you know, aversion to the ranger actually mounting a drake. I don't know why he got terrified. There are certain triggers to make your enemies be terrified in the original game, so I guess that's being carried over to this game, and we got to recruit this guy to our side, just like that. Our next task was to kill the overlord, and apparently the overlord is unique, and even his throne room is unique, and div designed to his specific specifications. So this guy has some kind of flamethrower somehow, and he had these little strips on the ground where flames would shoot up if he shot them. So apparently all of that is unique to that specific war or overlord, not warlord, but also you could use your allies and summon them in specific parts of the battle. I wasn't really sure how we did that. If we clicked a certain button or that was a, you know, certain event that happened dynamically, I don't know. But after killing the warlord, the overlord, excuse me, I keep saying that we captured the entire region we get a bunch of loot experience we recruit some more allies all of that stuff so apparently all of those key events we're talking about the revenge of the first war chief the spy in there the explosion breaching the wall uh getting on the drake terrifying the other war chief and this unique overlord all of those events apparently are dynamic depending on you know procedural generation or things you've done beforehand to piss off certain you know enemy leaders all that stuff is dynamic to create personal stories and if that's true if no two experiences are going to be the same that's crazy that's really exciting to me the final bit i want to touch on is the rpg mechanics that they showed off they had a little line where they said they've introduced rpg mechanics but the only real thing they showed off was a looting system so now we're going to have equipable loot for our ranger slash wraith and so the war chief one of them that we killed dropped some armor and we actually equipped that armor it's nice and gold but it looks like there's a ton of slots there's two weapon slots a bow slot two armor slots and then some kind of ring slot there was also maybe another empty one i'm not sure but these pieces of loot give you certain resistances kind of like with the nemesis system and enemies and allies all that stuff and so it's interesting to see what other rpg mechanics are going on with the game i know that shadow of mordor itself had a skill tree that divides between the Wraith and the Ranger, and there were a lot of different things you could do. You could tame beasts, you could have unlock different combat moves, unlock different bow moves with the Wraith. There was a lot of different RPG things going on already with the original game, but I'm excited to see how they've expanded on that further. And if I had to guess, there's probably going to be some army related bonuses because we know that Shadow of War and, you know, going through and, you know, performing these sieges on towers and strongholds and fortresses, it's all about army. So I think there's going to be some kind of army boost going on probably a way to boost your soldiers and your war chiefs and all kinds of stuff overall I've got to say I'm really excited to play this game this was kind of a surprise because it was leaked I believe on targets website almost a month ago and I don't think that was the formal kind of release and how they wanted to reveal it but I think a lot of people are really excited just because of how fantastic Shadow of Mordor was and so I am super excited for this improved nemesis system there's nothing quite like it in video games as far as I'm concerned at least in the style and fashion that they carry it out with in this series so it's still unique and fresh and you know it's been a little while since the first game so really what i'm hoping for with shadow of war is more playtime and more replay value again like i said i think really one of the only complaining points for the original game for a lot of people was the uh, playtime you know there wasn't enough of the game they completed it in 20 hours and they wanted more
Those were my thoughts on this new gameplay. I'm sure that Monolith is going to release more gameplay ahead of launch. The release date is August 22nd of this year, so that's really exciting. Again, Shadow of Mordor came out in 2014, so it's been three years since the original game, and we're going to get the next, you know, Middle Earth game of this series from Monolith this year. So that just kind of, you know, sweetens the deal. It's not too far away, and so I hope we get to see more of the game. Let me know what you guys think about what we've seen. Are you enjoying what you You've seen have you not played this series and are you looking to get into it with this game let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video remember to hit that like button i'd really appreciate it and subscribe to my channel for more shadow of war whenever there's more information something that interests me i'll definitely be sharing my thoughts with you guys moving forward so thanks so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time